And what does it mean to believe? Because if you were to talk to some people, believe means, well, if you believe, you're willing to do works. Or if you talk to the Jehovah's Witnesses when they come to the door, they'll say, well, if you believe, you'll keep the commandments. So they're trying to change what this word believe means. But let's look at the Bible and look at a couple of passages. And the Bible will actually show us what the word believe means. The first passage we'll turn to is in uh, 1 John, reading from verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. So the Spirit of God bearing testimony there, the Holy Spirit. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. Look at what's constantly being repeated here. It's the witness, the testimony, the, the record, because it's something that is being said and being stated by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, by the Word, by the Father. Um, verse 9, if we receive the witness of men, so now it's saying if we receive a, something that men have said, the witness of God is greater. So what God says is even greater than what man says. Uh, and you can trust that. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. So if you believe on Jesus Christ, you have this witness of God. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life, and he that hath not the son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So we see here that the record is that God hath given to us eternal life, verse 11, and this life is in His Son. So what does it mean when we believe that? Well, verse 10 shows us what that means when we believe it. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. And we, and we learn it further up in the chapter, in verse 6, that the, the Spirit bears witness. So that witness that is in us is the Holy Spirit. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God. So now that we see what does it mean to not believe? Hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. So we see there a definition of what it means to believe something. It means that you're not making somebody a liar because the witness, the testimony of God is that Jesus Christ has given us eternal life and this life is in his Son. And when you believe that, you're accepting it as truth, right? When you believe something, you're accepting it as truth and you're not making the person a liar. Th think about this. If I told you my name was Victor and you said, I don't believe you, you're saying that I'm lying to you. I'm lying to you that my name is Victor. You're saying, you're not telling me the truth. Your name is not really Victor, it's something else. But when you believe it and I say, my name is Victor, and you say, I believe that, you're accepting that as truth. You're accepting that what I've said to you is true. So when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe the record that God has gave, given us. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. That's what it means to believe. And uh, we can compare this with Titus uh, chapter 1 verse 2. It says here, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So we see that, that we have hope in eternal life hope of eternal life because we believe the record that God has given to us eternal life and we can believe it because God cannot lie. We, 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 we accept it as truth. We're not calling God a liar. Just sort of comparing uh, that thought there. But let's look at a couple of other words that are related to the word believe. Um, let's go to John chapter 20. Reading from verse 24. Now this is after Jesus has rose, risen from the dead and he's appeared to his disciples. But Thomas wasn't there the first time that he appeared uh, amongst the 12. And uh, the, uh, the 11 or the 10 are uh, trying to uh, tell Thomas that they saw him. And this is what happens here. But Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now this is not talking about his salvation, because the disciples were already saved. It was about believing whether or not Jesus had indeed risen from the dead, um, as they had said to him. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And look at this. And be not faithless, but believing. Now how does faith and believe, how, how are they related? Well, when you believe, it's, it's the verb of when you actually put your faith in something. So faith is the noun. So when you put your faith, the object, into somebody, it's in, into something, that's when you're believing. So believe is the verb and faith is the noun. So we can see believe there means to have faith. Uh, let's go to 1 Timothy 4. Verse 10, we see this verse here. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So we see there a link between believing and trusting something. So how, do, how is trust and, uh, and believe related? Well, you know, we said faith is the noun of the, of the verb believe. And when you trust, it's when you place your faith in something. Right when you're trusting something, and we can see there that he's saying we are both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. We have our faith in God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So we can see the relation there between trusting and belief. Um, and what's another uh, similar word to believe? Well, let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8 verse 22 says here, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So what is that verse, is, verse is saying? It's saying that all the creation is groaning in pain, and when it says here, but ourselves also, it says, and not only they, so it's not say, also just saying those that are in the world, but also us who are in the world but are saved, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to which the redemption of our body. So when, we, when we're saved, we get our new body uh, at the resurrection. But verse 24, look at this, for we are saved by hope. But, what, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why, death he, why doth he yet hope for? So we see, we've seen trusting, we've seen faith, and here we see hope. So how does hope differ to faith and trust? Remember, faith was the noun of belief. Trusting was when you put your faith in something. And hope, as far as I understand it, is... Hope is when you put your trust in something and you're hoping, well, you're, you're looking for a positive result, aren't you? The opposite of that is despair. The opposite is if you have nothing to put your hope in. But when you put your trust in something and you're hoping for a positive result, you're looking for a positive result, that's what hope is. Uh, and let's look at Hebrews 11. We see the definition of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when you hope on something, you're, you're believing something that you've heard, not something that you've seen, like the testimony of God. And when we put our faith in that, the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. So because you can't see it, the evidence of that thing that you can't see is the belief that you have, is that faith that you have, is the trust that you have, is that hope. Now, with that in mind, let's go to Romans 4. And we'll just read this whole chapter because there's a couple of things in this chapter I want to point out to you. But Romans 4 verse 1, What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? 
For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but also who walk in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those, calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offences and was raised for our justification. So this chapter, Romans 4, is a great chapter just explaining what it means to believe, showing that Abraham believed God and was computed unto him for righteousness and how that applies to us and also shows us that it's by believing on Jesus Christ and, and by faith and not by the works of the law. So we see some of those words that we covered through Romans 4. We see there in verse 18, who against hope believed in hope, that hope that we spoke of, that you know Abraham had his hope in God. We see in verse 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was yet a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And then we see in verse 20, the belief, he that he staggered not at the promise of God. So he's believing the testimony, the witness of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And we see another definition in verse 21 of, of believing and being fully persuaded that he had promised he was also able to perform. So we see faith, trusting, hope, being fully persuaded, that's what it means to believe. It doesn't mean that you do works. We actually see at the beginning of this chapter that works is the opposite of faith. It says there in verse 5, But to him that worketh not, no works, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So if believe, what they say, actually means that you're willing to do works or that you're going to keep the commandments or you're going to do works, how does that even make sense with verse 5 where it says, but to him that worketh not, no works, but believeth, saying that you're going to believe and not have any works on him that justified the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man under whom God imputeth righteousness, without works. So very clear that salvation is by faith, it's by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and it has nothing to do with works. 